Remember, our mics are hot and we're about 40 seconds uh, before we go live. We're back again for another Spurs Rewind. We are live across Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, so we are joined today by our counterparts here. We are joined by the lovely Vicky Vicks. Vicky, how have you been? I'm good. Doing how was well. your Labor Day weekend? It was great. I got to go visit my sister. Oh, nice. nice. You got yeah. out of San Antonio or did you stay in San Antonio? I did. I went to um, L.A. Actually. Oh, nice. Yes. It was a last minute trip. Just. <laughs> decided did, to take did it. you all get to partake of the lovely food they have there yes we got to go to a few places all like outside eating and all that sort of stuff did it's you try pinkies there, so. what was that did you try pinkies no yeah next I time you're in that. town go to pinkies they got really pinkies. good uh hot dogs <laughs> yeah I'll have yeah to try. that's a trip <laughs> for next time and we are going to be joined also by the one and only josh paredes uh, Josh, how was your Labor Day weekend? Any trick shots? Um, yeah, I was actually doing some earlier today. <laughs> um, that's that might be why I have a little glisten to me, a post shower glisten. Hundred degree heat will get you, get you, get yeah, to you, man. I like to do that though. That's like my workout now, basically. So um, get out there in the heat, get some exercise. That dog's still trying to jump the fence over toward me. <laughs> Maybe he, he can give you some. Day. He can do some air bud stuff or something, man. He wants to join you. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I might get that dog to do it. He's jumping like over the fence practically. Maybe you um, can do yeah, an alley oop. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll throw it over and he'll have him hit it to me. All right, look out for that, or he'll just puncture the ball. Hey, there you go. Hey, I saw you had a spotter in the latest uh, trick shots you had put out there. What's that about? Yes, that was my friend I grew up with. He, I used to live next door to him um, from when he was in like kindergarten or something. And that nice. he's a few years younger than me. Um, I had him over. I was like, hey, the people have asked for tandem trick shots. Let's knock some out. We did. We did a few there. I posted them on Monday. So maybe in the future we'll do more. It's pretty fun, but it's a lot of uh, a lot of sweat and tears into that. <laughs> you know, maybe if I I'm just browsing around, passing through the neighborhood, and I see a garage sale, and somebody has one of those small trampolines, I might just have to pick one up <laughs> if it's five bucks or less. Josh, don't. Oh God, you want me to get injured? Don't you? <laughs> we we can put some mats or something down. We'll put some paper or something on the ground. You know. Okay, I'll get some gym mats. Yeah, you get some gym nats, you get you a, a helmet and some elbow pads, you'll be all right. <laughs> you'll just bounce be off the, the step. You'll bounce, season two. Yeah, you'll bounce off the shed, you'll be okay. Now, there. if we can get you go through a flaming hoop, now that would be something. <laughs> I'm not the coyote now. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have Vicky hold a hula hoop on fire for you. <laughs> yes. How was your Labor Day, Joe? It was good. Very busy. Um, I was able to actually uh, do some bargain bin shopping. So I went out to our local Goodwill to kind of, you know, see what I could find and get back to the community. And I found some good finds and I was happy with that. Kind of hung out with my buddies and, you know, brought the evening to an end at some uh, little restaurant here around the corner from where we live. So all in all, it was an eventful Labor Day, re a very relaxing Labor Day weekend. And I get to spend some time with the family cooking out and enjoying some pool time. So I might have a little red sheen to myself. <laughs> <laughs> but more other than that, you know, it was good. So moving on now, we're going to go ahead and talk about Becky Hammond. Uh, it looks like the WNBA unveiled the top uh, 25 greatest players in league history. And lo and behold, Becky Hammond made the list. You know, I don't think it's a, a, a surprise to anybody, but I mean, she was in, in named with some esteemed company, you know, um, I'm looking at the list to see who else was in there. They had Sue Bird, uh, Swin Cash, Tamika Catchins, Tina Charles, Cynthia Cooper, Elena Del Don, uh, Sylvie, Sylvia Fowles, uh, Yolanda Griffith, and Brittany Griner. 
Uh, we did have some oh, wow. some recent players, some players that are still in the league that were named to the list as well. And, you know, and they also named Becky Hammond in there as, and, you know, Lisa Leslie. So Candace Parker, you know, so she's in there with this, some esteemed company and good for her. You know, Becky, the accolades just keep coming for her. She's a hard worker mm -hmm. and she's so, you know, she's very smart when it comes to her knowledge of the game of basketball, you know, and just to show you that she's been able to cross over not only what with what her what she did with the WNBA in her time there, but also cross over and be able to be a, a well respected assistant coach in the NBA, which is generally a man's league. You know, that's that's really a trailblazer right there. So I'm really happy and, and very proud of Becky. How did you how did you feel about this latest news, uh, Vicky? Oh, it's exciting. I'm happy for her too. Uh, she's definitely a super talented. She was definitely a super talented player. I remember watching her when she was at the Stars here. Um, you know, helped them get to that finals they played in, I guess, 2008. Um, you know, she was a really great point guard. Um, somebody that I looked up to as a player. And now, like you said, she's, you know, showing that she also has those coaching skills. And, and I think that she's definitely worthy of this. I think it's crazy that, like, I didn't ever feel during her playing years that she was as respected as as she could have been. And when you look at the list of names, there are other players on there that are, you know, really highly respected players. And I think she was due a little more respect during her playing years. Um, but it's good to see she's getting this kind of accolade now, you know, better late than never. Yeah, better late than never. But I mean, to be named as, you know, part of the top 25 of all time. That's amazing. like, wow, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> what did you think of the latest news about Becky and, and her joining the top 25 list of the WNBA greatest players, Josh? Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, I was just looking at, um, you know, the Silver Stars kind of all-time leaders because I like to dive into those. And I see here she had she leads the franchise in threes made, almost 500. Um, she's like second in all-time points. She... Shot ninety two percent from the free throw line, which is which is crazy. That's like, that's like uh, all Steve Nash territory. Yeah. Um, so yeah, very impressive, very well earned. Um, it's cool to see her keep getting the recognition that she deserves, and I'm sure the next thing will probably be a head coach at some point. Hopefully, it will it will be with the Spurs as we've mentioned. But um, any way she can get it, I, I feel like it's a matter of time within. Very shortly, I think uh, she'll be that'll be her next step. Hopefully, you know, it's with the San Antonio Spurs and she doesn't go somewhere else. I mean, I would love to to keep her here and, you know, in the city of San Antonio. And she's done her time. And I think that she's done her time in the trench and she de she deserves the opportunity to be the yeah. next uh, coach head coach of the San Antonio Spurs. That would actually be very groundbreaking. And I think it would open the the door for other women to go ahead and join, um, you know, the coaching staff here as, you know, as far yes. as them being head coaches in, in the NBA, that would be something, you know, so look forward to that change coming hopefully sooner rather than later. And so, then it won't become a big deal. Like that yeah. someone's a female coach, it'll just be a head right. coach as, as we've seen with, yep. you exactly. know, everything else that eventually uh, women start to be break into the field. Um, then it'll just be another head coach, which is yeah. how it should be. They won't. And I think, she deserves it. Like she deserves to be the first um, female head coach. And if she doesn't get to be because of, you know, I don't know, whatever reason, that's going to be really annoying. If some other, you know, lady gets up there before she does. Um, but I think she will. And if it means she has to leave the Spurs, even though, you know, I'd like her here, I think she has to, she has to do that. Yeah. So we're going to move on here and talk about some other breaking news. Uh, we did have the Spurs finally announced that they officially uh, waived uh, Chandler Hutchinson and they signed both Keita Bates Diop and Joe Wieskamp. Uh, that was official. They We already knew that they were going to wind up signing Keita Bates Diop and uh, Joe Wieskamp. You know, we had already seen them tweet some stuff out on, on social media about that on Twitter, but it was a, made official. So that means that the Spurs are still going to have to kind of trim some of that uh, roster down a little bit. I believe right now they're currently at 17 players 
they can only roll in with 15 and the deadline is October 18th, which means somebody's either going to get cut or maybe they'll make a trade, you know, with another team to kind of free up some roster space. But it's interesting, you know, to say the least. I mean, it, we don't know what they're going to wind up doing. Are we going to wind up losing someone that we kind of loved here on this team? You know, um, I hope we don't lose uh, Drew Eubanks. I kind of like his his tenacity and his enthusiasm out there on the court. And I'm kind of fearful that that might happen. Um, but I'm hoping for the best. So what do you think, Josh? Uh, who do you think is going to wind up getting the axe? Or do you think the Spurs are going to make a trade to free up some space? Well, first of all, I was kind of surprised that um, Kita's return was just a straightforward uh, two-year contract. I was, I just assumed he was going to take the other two-way spot. I even wrote about that. I think Paul was uh, on the same uh, mindset that that was probably going to be the case. But now that does open another two-way spot for someone else from, you know, um, the G League or something. But as far as um, who will be out, I mean, I'm looking at the roster now. I think uh, Alfaro Camino is probably the next that he would be waived or included in some kind of package, but he's not really the best, the most tradable. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, the next one would probably be Eubanks. And in terms of you know, they already have Hurdle, they have Collins, they have Landell now, and uh, you know, it, it would just be a point of that that center position already has enough, and they need to cut it down in some way. I don't know who else they could really take out from here at this point. So unless they do a trade that involves Young and uh, or a couple of players and just for future assets, then uh, Eubanks might be might be the one. I'm sure someone else will, will take him up, though. Yeah, and then, you know, unfortunately, it's the nature of the way that the the front office works. You know, we we don't always see what's going on, but we kind of can anticipate what might happen. Now, we're not saying that this will come to fruition. We're just saying the likelihood might be there, you know, so Mm -hmm. hopefully not. Maybe they find a way to keep him, you know, and maybe get rid of somebody else as far as a trade or an outright cut. But I believe Eubanks, his his contract is fully guaranteed. So again, if they went ahead and just released him outright, they still have to, to pay that salary, you know? Right. So what do you think, Vicky? Do you think that they're going to wind up cutting someone or you think they're going to make a, a trade to, to free up that roster spot? Uh, they need um, to trim it down to 15 before October 18th. I do think they're going to, to wave a couple people. I think Al Farouk Aminu also um, is probably pretty low there on the chopping block. And I also do think Drew Eubanks is. Um, I was actually kind of surprised that they signed um, Bates Diop to the two-way contract I don't know I guess just because I guess was he on a two-way contract last year so uh, he yeah he was on a two-way and he was his call to if he can get come back on oh. the two-way but they signed him to a straight contract a two-year contract so now there's That's another two-way, two-way slot open along with Wee's camp so oh, I guess okay. they, they had faith in him I like him though too so I, I don't do really like him I it. like him um, I just yeah. didn't see it happening. I don't know. I think it was kind of in my mind between Eubanks and him. And I was thinking he'd be the one to go. But I feel like this does sort of look bad for Eubanks now. Yeah. Um, I don't really see them doing a deal with Young. But I guess it could happen. I know there's still talk that there's interest in doing some sort of trade. Um, it's just so, like up in the air. I don't feel like there's really any clear direction on what they're thinking. Maybe they're, you know, shopping around and seeing what they can get, but I can't say that I'm leaning one way or the other on what they're going to do. I think slightly I am leaning, leaning towards them just ending up waving a couple of guys out. Yeah. But, know, it's very interesting I mean, topic of discussion. Yeah. Very yes. interesting topic of discussion. Cause we don't really know What's going to happen? We can just guesstimate. So we're just saying it makes sense to, to at this point, look at yeah. Drew Eubanks. And I know a lot of uh, Spurs fans have come to really appreciate his style of play, you know, and his enthusiasm yeah. when he goes up and tries to dunk and murder mm-hmm. every rim that he sees, you know, got to appreciate yeah, that he like goes him. and goes and wants to dunk with authority, unlike one Yaka Portal, you know. <laughs> so yes. I, I like it. I like his energy out there on the court. 
You know what's funny though is I don't know if you caught this news, but the Suns just I think it was like yesterday they signed Chandler Hutchison to a two way themselves. Oh wow! So clearly they had interest in him. I mean I know they've had interest in Thaddeus Young too. Yeah. So it makes me wonder why like the Spurs couldn't have just been like, all right, let's just send you both of these guys. Yeah. Or and uh, we can get Jalen Smith or someone. I'm sure maybe they didn't want to part with him, but. I thought that was interesting. Like right when the, the Spurs waved Hutchison, he he's now on a two way with the Suns. So I don't know. They're just kind of trying to poach the uh, the Spurs guys now. It's interesting. Yeah, that makes me feel like the chances of Young then being chopped around are a little lower than. Yeah, and I actually saw like someone on Twitter. I think it was a Suns fan. They were like, "Hey, let's let's trade him for Thaddeus Young." I was like, "He just came from the Spurs. <laughs> I'm not gonna want him right back." Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we have some people watching us uh, on YouTube. Frenchy Betts is watching. I just flashed one of his comments up here on the screen. He says, I, he says, I don't think that Yach Landau will play much. Drew looks safe unless they keep Thaddeus Young. Yeah, we. that's a big question mark right now. Is Young, are they going to keep him or are they going to trade him? Now, if they go ahead and trade him, well, then they can probably keep uh, Drew Eubanks. But we don't really know what's going to happen with Young. The old Spurs would have kept him. The new Spurs, I don't know. Maybe the picks might look attractive, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, Landell, uh, he looks nice to all of us, but he might just be another case of, where is Landell? Why isn't he getting time? <laughs> right. Because he's so new. But yeah, that, that might be true also. I, I would prefer Landell just from the little I've seen over Eubanks just to get yeah. his shot, considering he has like a three and everything, and he's so excited. Not to say Eubanks doesn't have energy, but I just want to see... It's, this is a whole new season. Let's let's see what all these guys got now. Yeah, and we have another comment from YouTube. We have an, uh, another viewer watching, Tyler Mainho, and he says, Eubanks has so much potential. He's really improving his shot this offseason. I hope we can keep him and trading young and waving uh, Aminu. And then we, we have, still need to get rid of one more, though. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> we still have 17. We need to get rid of two. And what else do we have here? Okay. Yeah, I, I wrote yeah. about Eubanks. Uh, Chip England actually called him like the best shooter on the team, but he just doesn't shoot, which is crazy <laughs> to me from Chip England. He yeah. might have been exaggerating to boost his confidence, but yeah. that's, I mean, yeah, maybe that was before Bryn Forbes also came back. But <laughs> that was pretty interesting that he said on an interview that, that, yeah, that he was like, he's going to try to let them threes fly. I don't know if that'll be part of the game plan, but we'll see. He did try some last season, right? Yeah, he's 100, percent I think, all time. Oh, but he's yeah. shot like three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to show the picture here because I'm going to talk real briefly here about Joe Wieskamp, and they signed him to a, a two way contract. Um, and that was done on the on the seventh of September is when they announced that over social media. I believe we probably all saw it via Twitter. Um, so good on him, you know. I mean, he was our our second uh, pick in the draft, just behind Primo. And there's still high hopes for this for this kid, you know. I mean, his future with the Spurs, we don't really know what's going to happen, you know. So I'm excited. You know, I think that's one of the things that we've kind of talked about and, and I told you you guys about. It's, it's those intangibles that we don't know about, you know, the uncertainty uh, of coming into this season and the not knowing, you know. The not knowing to me is one of those things that is new to everybody because – for so long, everybody was so enamored with the big three and whatnot. But now we have kids like Primo. You have Wieskamp. You know, you have Akita Beats Day Up. You know, you have, you know, all these other, you, you have Lonnie Young, you know, and all the other young uh, players that we have on the team. The youth movement is going to be in, in full swing this upcoming season. So it'll be a very interesting season for all of us <laughs> it's either going to be a good season or it's going to be a learning experience let's put it like that <laughs> well, that yeah. means it's good either way it's going to be good either way i mean yeah. the thing is is that a lot of fans have to realize one one thing and i because i've been through the the different phases uh, of watching the team rebuild and get better <laughs> than finally being able to get over that hump and go to the promised land you know when they finally beat the lakers and they had the pieces that they needed to go and win their first chip Every team needs to go through that little dip, that lull, you know, and they have to lose and they have to have a lot of heartbreak. You know, there has to be a lot of lessons taught and the losing, you know, and it has to hurt you. And you got to learn from that. And it, it, it motivates you to get better. 
I think that's kind of we're on the cusp of them now trying to go ahead and form their own identity. They're going to have to go through losing seasons. They're going to have to go through heartbreaking losses. But all this is going to go ahead and mold them into possibly a championship team at some point. You know, you're that's what the hope is. So we're at the start of that. So it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. It's going to be hard to watch. You know, and as a fan, you're going to get frustrated. But the payoff, it could be there if we're patient, you know. So that's mm-hmm. going to be the lesson for this season. Patience. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. Wow. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to have a lot to survive. <laughs> yes. A lot of patience. And I don't know with the Spurs fans nowadays. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't have a lot of that in uh, in spades, uh, Josh. So. It's I gonna, got called a, uh, a Spurs Twitter gatekeeper just for saying oh, that um, that people that are negative every day are, are irritating. It's <laughs> <I was laughs> like I, I don't care what you put. I'm just giving my opinion. It's annoying, but sure, you yeah. can say what you want. People yeah. just deal with it stuff their own ways. It's fine. Yeah, one of the things I'm gonna I was gonna talk about it at the end, but I guess we can go ahead and talk about it right now. Is let's go ahead and talk about. Uh, the Spurs, I, I already forgot. I'm, there he is. I forgot the name of the, <laughs> the, the coach guy. guy. No, the, <laughs> I put it down here and now I lost it. Nielsen, <laughs> Matt Nielsen. Uh-oh. Well, let's talk oh, about yes. Nielsen being named from the Austin Spurs, being the head coach of the Austin Spurs. Spurs went ahead and made an announcement today on, on Twitter, and they said that Matt Nielsen is now officially with the San Antonio Spurs, and he's going to be added to, you know, the coaching roster. He's going to be an assistant coach joining Becky Hammond, you know, as coach, as coach pops uh, staff. So congratulations to him. That means that there is a vacancy now, you know, for the Austin mm-hmm. Spurs. And let's see who they name as the new head coach for the Austin Spurs. So congratulations to Matt Nielsen. And we have some more comments here. <laughs> we have Elia Alf, Alf Guter. He's watching us from believe you t- or twitter twitter he says any spurs season is a good season that's the kind of enthusiasm <laughs> we need not burn it yes. to the ground you know <laughs> and then terrence is watching us from twitter and he says trade young for jalen smith cut you banks and Iminu. uh team needs someone at the five spot who can dunk <laughs> yes. we'll see what happens you know they I have that, take that i would take that yeah, we have the deadline coming up October 18th. It seems like a long way and away from us from right now, but something it's could happen. happen could excite you guys. You know, it could excite you guys <laughs> or make, make you really mad. <laughs> Joe, I don't know if you know the the, the whole um, uh, side story with the Matt Nielsen thing. People are co- um, kind of um, coming up with a spin on that. I don't know if you've seen that on Twitter. Joe. No, I haven't seen that on Twitter. I knew that he, he was coaching the Australian team. Yeah, because he's an Australian coach. So people are all like, are they setting up for Ben Simmons coming up? Oh, over my us? goodness. Oh, yes. <laughs> Rumor that will you know, never we had, die. I had to bring it up. It's a coming a weekly thing now. It's just it funny. Yeah. Like, we sh- <laughs> I think we should have its own segment, right? The Ben <laughs> yeah, Simmons to the Spurs watch, you know? The Simmons minute. Oh, yeah. Goodness. Oh, and we have some comments <laughs> here from Frenchie Betts uh, watching us on YouTube. He says they also signed Matthew Nielsen as their assistant coach. I don't know if you already pointed it out. Yes, we pointed that out. And he also says, well, Eubanks can dunk, so I don't want to, don't see why you would cut him if you want a dunker at the five spot. I thought that too, yeah. They might have just meant that Jalen Smith could be the dunker. That might have been what they meant, but yeah, either one could dunk. Either one could dunk. Yeah, that is true. But, you know, it's going to be hard for some Spurs fans to come to terms with letting <laughs> Drew Eubanks go. It's like they don't want to let him go, you know, uh, kind of like fun. when it was with like when we had Boban, you know, when we lost. Uh, Boban. Yes. Boban. It was like, he, you know, know, he's not really going to light it up, you know, every night. But he, he's one of those players that fans just love, you know, and he has yes. a bigger, the mascot or something. Man. <laughs> yes. <And> just <laughs> have him permanently on the bench. He, he doesn't have to play. Maybe you get a few minutes and garbage time i'm sure he'll be fine with that role right i, I, I was yeah. making a joke and i was like you know i wouldn't mind boban coming back you know and spurs fans are like no we don't want him back i'm like come Austin on spurs coach coach yeah. that coach boban yeah, Bobby? Yeah, coach the spurs <laughs> it's Austin spurs. coach boban assistant manu let's do this and yeah. 
Vicky can I'm be the ball girl. Those. You can be the ball girl, Vicky. You can hand out the water and go. Girl. Go with I the mom. The Becky of the Austin Spurs. Hey, there you go. You could be the Becky of the Austin Spurs. Get some gum. You're some not gum the Becky. You're the Vicky. The Vicky of the yes, Austin Spurs. Vicky. <laughs> Vicky Hammond. Oh, yes. Vicky Hammond. How about that? I think we kind we just coined a new uh, a nickname for Vicky there. Vicky Hammond. <laughs> Vicky Hammond. I like that. I like I'm that. Cool. <laughs> so we're gonna go uh, ahead and talk about some names that you you kind of need to be familiar with in the upcoming 2022 NBA draft. (laughs) And I got to give it to Ben on this one. Our very own Benjamin Bornstein wrote this article. And Ben, the headline is fantastic. It gets chef's kiss. (laughs) It says, names to know in the 2022 NBA draft. We're winging it. (laughs) Like He came up with that all by himself. That was was genius. So Ben goes on here. We're not going to name all the names. We're going to go ahead and give you a couple. If you want to go ahead... And check out the the full article for the other names on there. We go ahead and invite you guys to go and check out ProjectSpurs.com. I'm going to go ahead and show you the article right here. And again, just go to ProjectSpurs.com. So some of the names that we'll go over real quick here are going to be A.J. Griffin. Uh, ben goes on to say that he's a Duke freshman that measures at six foot six and weighs 222 pounds. He says he's built like a linebacker and plays plays it at times though and he says he loves to use his strength to get to the rim and he can guard three or four positions because of that power he's a surprisingly explosive athlete for someone that big and then he also names benedict i don't even know how to say his last name benedict (laughs) mathern uh he he's a six foot seven 195 pound wingman out of arizona showed quite a bit last season he's a very good shooter he shot 47.1 percent from the field and almost 42 percent from beyond the arc he said who's who scores off the ball well to boot so there you have it another name that ben throws out there is matthew mayer he says he's the reigning national champ clocks in at six foot nine and 225 pounds while you might think he belongs on our big man list, he plays more of the perimeter, so he gets to be put up here. Uh, put up here, he says he can shoot the ball well from beyond the arc and showed some flashes of handling the ball on his own. So these are some names that you can go ahead and get familiar with ahead of the 2022 NBA draft. Anybody on that list kind of pique your interest there, Josh? I mean, as he says in the article, it's way too early, (laughs) but based on kind of what I saw from it, I do like a big man that can shoot. That's not really something the Spurs have had a lot. Um, Maybe they'll have some of that this season, Um, but Matthew Mayer, he seems to fit that bill. Again, I do not know these names. Um, I do like how he chose, you know, even for wings, everybody's like 6'6 or taller, so kind of knows kind of fitting what the Spurs might need. Um, and then, you know, anybody from Duke, AJ Griffin, uh, anybody from Duke is probably going to be NBA ready or close to it. So, yeah, I definitely check out the article. He'll he then explained it a lot better than I could. And if you need somebody to give you some some names that you need to keep an eye on, always hit up Ben on Twitter. You know, go and check him out at the Boomstein. That's his Twitter handle. Uh, and he'll go ahead and talk with you about prospects. Ben is our prospect expert for Project Spurs, the guy knows everything when it comes to prospects and college ball and who you need to look for at the next level. So if you ever have any questions you need answered regarding that, hit up Ben at the born at the Boomstein at the Boomstein, I think is what he calls himself on Twitter. Um, Either one. Yeah. Either one. Hit him up, man. Yeah. You can have a position over there probably. Yeah. So Becky, uh, Becky, (laughs) (laughs) I was already catching on, you know, Vicky, (laughs) Vicky Hammond. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would any names come out, you know, stand out at you? Any players um, interest in, interest you at all? I also do not know these names very well, but I will say that I like Benedict Matherin because of the fact that he is a shooter and the Spurs need that. <laughs> I mean, you know, just by skimming this really quickly, I think anybody that they can get who's going to shoot from the outside again also is going to be an addition that they really need to take advantage of. 
Um, I didn't get a chance to look at his big man article, though. That I'm really interested in because I think that's, yeah. you know, that's the area the Spurs really need. Yeah, well, it's never too early to talk college. about the 2022 NBA draft, you know. You always have to keep your eye on the prize, you know, for any potential exactly. prospects that could help this team. Because yeah. I think yeah. God knows that we're going to need a lot of help coming <laughs> coming after this season, you know. Yeah, and yeah, and um, great job. Great work on the yeah. article. <laughs> I think Vicky needs to change her Twitter handle to Vicky Hammond, officially. <laughs> the Vicky Hammond. The Vicky Hammond. The Vicky Hammond. <laughs> And then Josh needs to write an article about you on Essay Spurned. <laughs> <laughs> all tying together. Oh it's all gosh, coming yes. together. Don't you it see it happening? Mm-hmm. <laughs> For real. I, but really, I really do think you need to change it to the Vicky Hammond. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You better do it before someone else steals it. I know. <laughs> so let's Speaking go of, yes. I don't know if you guys saw. Um, There's just a side story. I had. I don't know if you guys remember Francisco Elson. Oh, uh, yes. yes. 2007 um, championships uh, squad. I came across some stats of his because I'm working on something for Spurned, actually. And so I posted, you know, how underrated his postseason was and actually got a response from him. So that was cool. Nice. Um, but then I somebody pointed out to me that someone had, like, screenshotted my tweet. And, well, no, it wasn't even a screenshot. I think they Copy wrote it out. Job. They just, yeah, they copied and pasted my uh my picture and then uh, the picture that i put of elson and then they put exactly my tweet and they put it on facebook and i was like interesting and i I wanted to find it myself so i searched the guy's name and there were like four different spurs groups that he had done the same thing to i was like what is this all about um yeah i mean yeah it's just (laughs) funny because everybody's just kind of making fun of it now but it happens a lot yeah, what a strange thing to do like multiple times. I mean, I don't, it's not like I'm losing money or anything. It's just a tweet, but yeah. I just thought that was hilarious because uh, I had no idea that was happening. And apparently it has been for a while. So, yeah, I guess I know I've made it if people are good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Steal copy my work. and paste you. I've seen That's awesome. ju- just about That's awesome. everybody. I've seen just <laughs> about awful, everybody right? copied and pasted on there, especially one Paul Garcia. They do him a lot oh, as yeah, far as copy and pasting him really? when it comes to talking about, you know, salary and whatnot. I've seen that happen. I've even seen some of the big groups, some of the guys that are, are admins yes. try to pass themselves off as insiders. I'm an insider. I know everything. <laughs> I'm like, no, you're not. You're not an insider. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Eyes on your own paper, people out there. Yeah. Exactly. My sources tell me, I'm like, no. Spurs Reddit is not a source, man. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm it's pretty a, sure that guy's just trying to enter my contest for the Spurn thing right now. So good luck trying to win uh, that, no, <laughs> that <man>. prize. <laughs> hey, what if the guy that copied and pasted wins? That's what I'm talking about. I think that yeah. he just entered. I'm like, mm, I'm going to go ahead and cross that off the list. <laughs> we'll see, though. Yeah, we'll yes, see what my own, my own stuff. But speaking, my own of, uh, speaking of SA Spurn, let's go ahead and talk yeah. about your watch party or your relaunch party, should I say, that is going to be coming up next Saturday at The Bend. And if you've never been to The Bend, The Bend's a really cool block, little hangout. The block. the block, I'm sorry. The Block. It's a really cool little hangout spot that's over there by UTSA. I've been there a couple of times, and it's just a chill spot. It's like a, almost like a little uh, food truck park, you know, and they have beer. They have all sorts of drinks, really good food, just a chill spot to hang out and enjoy the evening. And uh, I'll go ahead and let Josh fill you in on the details. Yeah, and actually they have a new truck that just opened like a couple weeks ago from Houston. It's like a hot chicken place called uh, Clutch City Cluckers, I believe. And oh, wow. that, yeah, it's it's really good. And they have like hot chicken tenders. They have like sandwiches. They have like everything you could just cover in cheese. They have all that. So um, yeah, that'd be another reason to go. But yeah, like you mentioned on the 18th, I'm just going to have it like from 3 to 6 p.m. just you can stop by whoever is around that wants to come hang out and talk, talk about any articles or whatever, or, or just talk Spurs. Uh, that would be cool. I haven't really met a lot of Spurs Twitter before. Maybe just a handful. Joe, I haven't even uh, been able to see Vicky yet. Hopefully I know. Sometime down the road. Yes. Um, but yeah, this is just something I want to do just to kind of meet some people and, and talk to get people's ideas and, and let them know about this site. I'm going to have, um, a couple of shirts, not a lot. I'll have some pins that I got from the Spurs shop. And I and I actually just got these today earlier. 
some of these stickers for this is, this is the logo oh, of nice. my, i like that it has like humorous satirical it's kind of the slogan of the that's so cute. the site so, cute. so i'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute it's so awesome that. um yeah i'm gonna have i'm gonna have these out there i'll probably end up sending them out to that's a couple awesome. of you guys too whoever can't make it um but yeah so I'll, I'll get with you about that later but yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun and then the next day is well when i'll be starting the five days in a row of articles um, that kind of to launch the site again and uh, really get some momentum behind it and, and some attention on it. And who knows, you know, hopefully it can blow up and, and be my own thing. And I can really just write in my own voice and be unfiltered, kind of like I was on the uh, pop gold medal article. I can do more of that <laughs> kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'm very excited about it. You got to do an article on, on Vicki Hammond. <laughs> I'll do it like a profile. Yeah. If she could run the Spurs yes. for a day, what would she do? <laughs> Bring Patty back. Yes. <laughs> That's and what she would do. Force the big three out of retirement. They would be her assistants. They would be her assistants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My assistant coaches, Timmy, Tony, they and would. Manu. The whole staff. Oh, no. You know what? You got to wear the sticker now. You like Josh's sticker. You got to wear it at yes. work and, 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 kind of advertise for him it's so cool yeah. yeah i just got it um i just got them early today so i'm excited i'll be passing them out at the thing and we should have got buttons we should have got buttons made you know i could have pinned it on my shirt because i'm out in the back. Uh, i don't know if people do buttons anymore joe i haven't seen people with i've buttons. seen buttons though, I've politicians seen them. <laughs> no i've actually seen them they put them on oh. backpacks and stuff now okay i guess for backpacks. yeah backpacks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Really. you know when i'm out and about walking around i'll, I'll sport the button but the stickers. Yeah, I, I already put it on my laptop. I have it on my. On trend. Uh, I want Vicky to put it on her forehead and just do like a live stream with it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. The Man, whole you have time. so much homework for Vicky, dude. I know. Because <laughs> she's always game for it, though. Vicky will do it. She's funny. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, about the site, like I, I also have um, a giveaway that I'll be doing uh, the next day just for anybody that um follows me and and the spurn site and retweets that thing um that's what that guy was trying to win that stole all my stuff he won't win but <laughs> anyone else is eligible he won't win. <laughs> so um, but he, he, Tan, yeah. he entered to win so he has a chance a one maybe <laughs> there's like a zero 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 point one chance <laughs> But yeah, I'll just pick up. I'll pick up the entry. I'm like, oh, nope, I didn't see that one. So <laughs> the dog this? ate it. <laughs> the dog ate that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh so my gosh. we're gonna go ahead and start bringing the show to a close. You, we appreciate everybody who's commented and watched along with us. Greatly appreciate the support. Make sure you also subscribe to us on YouTube. You know, the Project Spurs Network. Uh, we are nearing the magical 1,000 subscribers mark, and I think we're we're almost there. So. If we can get some subscribers, that gets us closer to the 1,000 subscriber mark. And that would be a milestone. I think we're going to have to have the balloons and everything, you know, 1,000. <laughs> and take Instagram pictures, you know, and all that kind of stuff. It'll be fun. Backdrop. Say yeah, we'll let we'll let yeah. Vicky be in charge of the backdrop because I got no idea <laughs> what to do Another assignment there. for you. I know. Vicky has Real. homework. I got to write this down. Yeah. <laughs> So as we start bringing the show to a close, I'm going to go ahead and start bringing up your little, uh, you know, the little things that I flash up on the screen here. We'll start with you, Vicky, since I picked on you so much. This is where you can follow <laughs> the Vicky Vix. Well, for a while, maybe she might change exactly. it to the Vicky Hammond. <laughs> I have to get like another one so I don't lose mine. <laughs> yeah, if maybe. I lose mine, I'll never be able to go back. <laughs> you should you should start another one, the Vicky Hammond, and that one could be a, a, parody a parody account. account. My parody account. Let's <laughs> all do it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. That's your alter oh. ego now, Vicky. Vicky. <laughs> Vicky Hammond. <laughs> so you can follow oh, Vicky like here that. on Twitter yeah. at what the the Vicky Vic. There you go, and it's on screen for everyone to ever for everyone to see. And Josh, where yeah. can they go ahead and follow you? Now I flashed your stuff up here on Twitter. Yeah, so somewhere down there at Josh810. I feel like I already did my plugs. It's at, at Spurned at Josh810. See me do trick shots. You can see me post stuff that'll get stolen and put on Facebook. You can see me posting my articles for Alamo. 
uh, sharing Project Spur stuff. Um, yeah, at Josh810 on Twitter. There you go. But I'm serious. If I find a trampoline, I'm going to pick <laughs> that sucker up and I'm going to go drop it off for you. Yeah. Yes. Your wife will either say, oh, no, or she's going to say, this is great. <laughs> Honestly, I'm sure I would try a couple and then I'll see how it feels. <laughs> You're going to say, no, great. I almost broke my neck on too that tempting. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they can follow me on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast. And as you can see, it's all spelled out T W O Two Shots Podcast. And I'll talk to you about, you know, what's going on in the world of sports. And also, we are on the eve of the NFL season opening up. And yes, I am a Dallas Cowboys fan, so I'm looking forward to seeing the Cowboys open up their season against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I know it's not going to end well for the Cowboys, but <laughs> hey, you got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> True. It's going to be another long season. Let's put it like that. I'm not expecting much. So get them some trampolines. Maybe that'll help. I don't know how. I don't. I don't think that'll help. They. They. Need, <laughs> at this point, they need to. They need to have God intervene. <laughs> you know, maybe he can take Jerry with him. You know, things might get better once Jerry's gone, Aww. but I doubt it. Oh my God. Jeez. <laughs> oh, it's really dark at the end. Really <laughs> dark. Really dark. So anyway, we'll on, go that ahead, note. on that note, we're going to go ahead and bring this show to an end. So for Vicky Hammond and Josh Perez, <laughs> I'm Joe Garcia. Thank you all for watching another episode of the Spurs Rewind. And like we always say, spread the love, stop the hate, and be kind. We're out. Peace.